can now directly select all three gnomon that you have displayed for the active construction plane in the world coordinate system. I'll demonstrate this by creating a uh, simple primitive block using the dynamics. I hover over the sphere and click to select the origin of the active construction plane. I'll finish up a creation of this block. Now I might want to realign the block, so I will use the alignment function and pick the world coordinate system vector. I'm going to repeat that same thing, this time uh, picking the active construction plane vector, either where at the location or at the corner. I'll use this block to demonstrate how feature holes remember the last keyed in value per each hole type. So I'm going to quickly create a simple drilled hole. I type in a value for my depth, one inch. I'll go ahead and place the hole. Next, I'm going to go and create a different hole type. counterboard hole and again type over the the key in for the depth and place the counterboard hole you'll see now that when I go back to put a uh, drill hole it remembers my value that I used last and allows me to continue placing more drill holes at that depth when we go back to the counterbore you'll notice it remembered the depth for the last counter bore I used. Let's go ahead now and call up an assembly of using part references. As you all know, our sample sprinkler part is made up of solids and in, in references. I'm going to go ahead and create a cutting plane using a dynamic cutting plane. I go to the trim option, select the none for trimming, but do check the boxes for creating the uh, intersection in the cross hatching. Now to see what we've created, let me go ahead in the assembly and change all the part references to be transparent. You'll notice only the part references are transparent. The remaining solids stay solid. You can see the cross hatching that was created for each of the both solids and the uh, part references.